Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are getting started with chapter two that is managing the test product. And uh, today we shall be picking up with the very first segment that is 2.1 test matrix. And as a part of it, till the first sub, -seg -sub segment which we'll be talking about is 2.1.1 matrices for the test management activities. And we would like to understand what kind of matrices can certainly be used uh, with respect to managing the whole set of activities by the test manager and what exactly these matrices are all about. As a part of our previous tutorials from the chapter one, we have already discussed that what are the test matrices. They basically help you to monitor the ongoing progress on the project related to project activities and the task. But certainly these matrices are not specific to one particular activity. It can be used for different phases, different lifecycle activities at the same time, of course, for different tasks which are conducted throughout the testing. And that's where it becomes very important for us to understand what could be this, those set of matrices what a test manager has to select at the beginning of the life cycle, which would be used periodically throughout the life cycle and how exactly these matrices are being reported. As a part of this particular segment, we'll be deep diving into understanding those matrices in detail. And then we'll be further explaining through different topics that how this is monitored and how exactly it is reported. To get started with the very first segment here we are talking about is the possible types of matrices. Of course, uh, we do have a very good saying in the management that says what gets measured gets done. And likewise, what does not get measured certainly likely to be not getting done because it is easy to ignore. Therefore, it is important to establish a proper set of metric for any endeavor, including testing. And that's where we have been uh, looking forward to understand what kind of matrices do we really have. So first of all, we do have four different matrices. However, fourth one is not liable to be considered as a type of it. So we only have three of them here. So the test ob objectives are the answer to why we test to determine whether the test objectives have been met. One must define a way to measure them. That means that's where the matrices become more helpful for us in order to determine what it takes for someone to keep an eye on the ongoing progress. But in order to monitor them, we need different matrices. So how we can categorize them? So of course there are four categories we have, but the one which is limited to only appreciation and recommendations, we don't have this listed anymore in this new syllabus. But of course, would like to add that also into the list. But for that, let's understand the other three first. We generally know these uh, set of matrices or categories of matrices as P4, because it contains four items with starting with P. So of course it is project matrix, the product matrix, and then process matrix. The fourth one is of course people matrix, which talks about, about the people skills and other relevant item. So if we talk about the project matrix, this basically measures the progress against existing project exit criteria, such as percentage of tests executed, passed and failed. Whereas product matrices would mainly be, mainly be about related to the quality of the product, which would measure things which talk about how exactly the quality expectations have been met, or what could be the relevant information related to defects, like what is the risk level at this point of time, what kind of defects have been identified and what are the remaining defects. So all the matrices which are related to defect would be put, put into the product matrix. And same way the risk related matrices, that is identified risk, mitigated risk, residual risk, all these matrices would be put under product matrix. And the third one here is of course the process matrix, which certainly talks about the capability of testing process and the effectiveness of testing. And there are plenty of matrices which can help us to report the efficiency and effectiveness of a process. And that certainly would be discussed down the line with other topics here in this chapter itself. But we will tell you how exactly sometime a defect data, defect detection rate, that is how many defects have been identified in which level or where did we find more number of defects could help us to identify the weaknesses as a part of the lifecycle activity or the overall test process effectiveness. And that's how exactly we will be able to use the matrices to determine them. The fourth one, which is not listed here is people matrix. And these are basically to check the effectiveness, the skills, the, you know, the activities performed by the team member. However, it is not an ethical practice to measure any individual's efficiency based on a matrix, but certain, certainly these matrices could be of great help when it comes to the appreciation, recommendations and appraisal of the people. 
So we certainly look forward to measure these things, but of course it is unethical practice or more of like it is a practice which is only done at the personal level to understand where the team needs support, where we need better hiring or where we need training and ramping up. But this does not add any value to the product, project or process. And that's where the fourth element has been listed out. So that's where we only have three of the items to be discussed and understood at this point of time. Let's add further to this. Of course, uh, when it comes to the matrices, we understand at this point of time, the advanced level syllabus is considering three major activities for the test manager, which includes the planning, monitoring and control and test completion. All we want to understand here that how exactly the matrices are distributed among these activities and what kind of uh, matrices definition and journey happens. So in a very nutshell way, of course, the matrices are defined as a part of the planning phase. So manager is someone who is responsible to select the required matrices, shortlist them because of course there are plenty of matrices. To be frank, we may have even 100 plus matrices available to track anything throughout the life cycle, right from the planning activities to the analysis, then writing of test cases, preparation of the environment, preparation of data, preparing of test suite, prioritization of test cases, traceability, building of the environment, then executions, you have so many things the test case execution rate, test case pass rate, fail rate, then defect related information, then risk related information. And then at the end, we certainly look forward to measure those things which are particular to what we have achieved and what we have not. So we certainly document those things which we are still pending with and we look forward to document them so that we can target them to be completed in the upcoming projects or in updates and upgrades of the, the same product. So indeed, uh, there are different three phases which talks about many things. So here we would like to know that what exactly happens with help of uh, different phases of the life cycle of testing with related to what is the matrices. So during the test planning, the appropriate test matrices are defined that match the test objective from the project test strategy. These matrices are used during the monitoring and control and may be different from those used at test completion. We would like to highlight to you here that when it comes to the test uh, matrices reporting, there are two types of report which you remember from the foundation. We have test progress report and we have test completion report. The test progress report is again reporting of these matrices at that point of time what you are tracking. So of course the matrices which are related to monitoring may be different from the completion. Completion are more of the milestones of the project. So you may have different set of matrices there or even you can find matrices which are common for both. That means you will be reporting it throughout the life cycle. At the end as well, you will be documenting as a part of the test completion report. So at this point, we would like to know you or we would like you to know that the matrices are certainly independent for each of these, like what you track throughout the process and then what is you track at the end or sometime we also look forward to have some common matrices which will be tracked throughout the life cycle and even at the end of the life cycle. So let's get into that and try understanding what are these matrices and how they can be distributed into two different activities. For that, we have a table here which represents that information to you. For example, if you talk about a matrix as requirement coverage, this can be used throughout the life cycle as a monitoring and control activity and even at the test completion to let the business know how many requirements have been covered. Similarly, the product risk coverage would be reported throughout the life cycle as well as at the end of the project during test completion. But code coverage is something which people are curious to know throughout the life cycle. But at the end of the day, we don't look forward to present it. It's just that it is not mandatory there or it is not recommended to showcase the code coverage because already throughout the project, you would have delivered everything what you have to deliver. At the end, people are more con concentrating on the SITs, the UI, the APIs. So code coverage is something which gets over by the end of the integration testing. And by then we know we have achieved the required coverage percentage. Similarly, the next one is actual versus planned estimation for the testing activities. So this would be tracked throughout the life cycle. At the end, we have finished this. So there is no point tracking it. Same way percentage of executed test cases per status with respect to like pass, fail, versus planned test cases. So this is required to be reported at both the points. That means during the, uh, the life cycle and as well as at the end, that is to let them know that there were any test cases which we could not execute or if we executed or skipped something, then what is the reason for that? Similarly, accumulated number of resolved effects versus accumulated number of defects. 
So if there are anything at any point of time throughout the life cycle regarding the defect, you would like to let them know or let the stakeholders be aware of that these are the current open defects or these are the defects which we have already resolved. But at the end of the day, that is during the completion, we might not be interested to show what is that is remaining with us. Not remaining exactly, it's more about the accumulated number of resolved effect. We would rather love to show what is pending for us to be done. Actual automated test cases versus planned automation test cases. This is not something which we use in monitoring and test control. Rather, we use it as a part of the deliverable, that is test completion. So during the test completion, we would be very much interested to showcase that how many of test cases have been automated for required maintenance executions, etc. But during this uh, entire life cycle, this may not be an effective metric to be calculated and measured. Finally, to talk about actual versus planned cost of testing. Now, again, this could be consistently monitored because uh, throughout the life cycle, we keep an eye on this and that helps us to understand are we running out of budget or we have something more. But this is not what we would monitor or keep an eye on during the completion of the life cycle because at the end of it, we have already stopped testing, so there is no point tracking this. So all I would like to add at the end of this discussion, you can easily judge why a metric would be required to be monitored throughout the life cycle and even at the end. It might be a deliverable or it might be just something which we monitor, but after the completion of testing, it does not add any value. So being a manager, we have to think from different perspective that why is it that we are not monitoring this particular metric at the test completion phase. Say for example, cost of testing. So cost of testing is only measured when we have the executions happening. Once we have stopped testing, we are pretty much sure that now we are done with it. There's nothing more to be done. Or even if you exhaust the budget, you have to stop testing. So there is no point calculating this matrix at the test completion phase. So by this, you can have a judgment created because in the examination, they can produce you any other metric. You will have to make a judgment to understand, will this metric be helpful during the life cycle or during the completion or maybe both and then you will have to select the right answer so with that we understand how matrices are basically started with how they are carried out throughout the life cycle and how they would be even used at the test completion phase we'll add more value in the upcoming tutorials so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.